Hey, and welcome back to another episode of Homebrew Horology. I'm recording this over a previously recorded clip because I didn't have the time to record a proper introduction to this video, so I'm sorry I've been really busy with finals and studying and stuff, but finals are over. My first year of college is done. So now that it's basically summer vacation for me, I'm going to have a lot more time to focus on, on creating projects and films for you guys. I apologize for not posting this on a Tuesday, it is Wednesday, I'm a day late, but uh, I had to do what I had to do, which was study. Anyway, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. I post at least every Tuesday, or at least I try to. Without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so quick experiment here. I have gone ahead and made, remade the gears with different dimensions and I've made them two-thirds the size that they are currently. I'm gonna see if my printer can first of all handle the smaller teeth, but also see if they can actually mesh with each other and provide maybe more stable results. Hopefully, we'll see how that goes. So I've been working on this design for quite a while now. Uh, I've been trying to figure out the orientation of each of the gears, whether they should be facing one way or another, um, and in addition, uh, just re recreating the mount for the escapement that I had before, um, because this part, uh, basically creating this part and an extension so that the gear train can actually mount in one piece, and that's something that I actually was able to do here. The part in green is the all-in-one mount. It actually took a pretty long time to figure out the sizes of the gear. These two green parts are actually near mirror images of each other, just with slight modifications to allow for the different escapement parts to actually move in there. Okay, so what I've basically done here is just split the all the necessary parts into two separate STL files. One with all the wheels and clock parts all aligned to be on the same level, I guess. And the other one is just the mounts. Um, as you can see here, all of these are the mounts for the brass shafts and parts for the escapement and other stuff. Here are the mounts for the clock. Um, I've added a couple holes uh, so that I could screw it, so that I could hopefully screw it down into some scrap wood or something. Here's just a quick comparison of the escape wheel after I made the changes and the escape wheel before. As you can see here, the, the, the pin is so much bigger compared to this one. And I think working with this will, will hopefully improve the functionality of the clock. In addition, this was the fourth wheel and this is now the new and revised fourth wheel um, with a much, much smaller radius and with a slightly different teeth count because I'm thinking of changing the beat rate of the watch itself. Also, now that I have my hands on a drill, I can do so much more with the brass shafts that I have, including using some fine grit sandpaper to polish them up and do some rudimentary deburring on the ends so that they all fit nice and snug into the 3D printed parts. fit test seemed to go really well. Um, all of the all the shafts fit into their holes in the mount. Um, 
Now I think I'm just going to drill some holes into some scrap wood so that I can actually hang this up somewhere. Next thing I want to try to do is um, I made the hole diameters on the mount itself a little too big and so now everything just sort of wobbles in place so I'm going to try to fix that and reprint. And to my surprise, we got a beat. I actually discovered that the escapement seems to work really well when I when I exert force on the fourth wheel, uh, which is pretty obvious because it takes a lot less torque. But I did run into problems when trying to get it to run, and I'll get into why this may be in a little bit. So I'm gonna try and go ahead and thread some fishing wire through this hole and keep in mind this is only a temporary fix just want to see how much weight it actually takes future me talking here I gave up on the whole fishing line endeavor here because uh, of a reason that I'm going to explain right now one issue that I'm sort of noticing is that because all of this is connected um, and there's such a big high amount of torque that has to be inputted into the center wheel, the entire, f the entire clock frame is sort of shifting. Uh, so when I'm pulling this down, or when there's a weight that's pulling down on the center wheel, this whole thing, this whole top plate sort of shifts and what that does is it puts pressure on the balance wheel and it prevents it from spinning freely um, like it sort of just stops and it prevents it from working so what I'm thinking of doing for the next iteration is put maybe these two um, on the same I guess I'll call it bridge and these lower torque components all on different on a different bridge um, but also since this whole thing is not even connected to the base I'm thinking I want to attach the bridge um, somehow Just add some sort of extension to anchor it to the wood itself all right apologies for the rushed episode but I Apologies for the rushed episode. I have finals to study for this week, and I'm 
quite busy with a bunch of other stuff too. So I think I'll leave it at that. So I will see you next week.